Hello everybody and welcome to another top 5 board gaming video. Today's topic is all about meh Kickstarter games. That is to say these are games that I had backed on Kickstarter and once I played them for a little bit I decided it's okay. Now, I've done a lot of videos about Kickstarter in the past where I've talked about Kickstarter in general. I've talked about games I loved that I backed. I talked about games that I loathed that I backed. Here, we're talking about games in the middle. They're okay. They're not really bad. They're not really great. They're just all right, you know? And so there's any number of reasons for this. There are games that maybe I really love the theme but didn't like the execution. Uh, mechanically, it wasn't what I expected. It wasn't what I expected from the company or whatever it happens to be. Any number of different things. Of course, as always, I would love to hear your guys' stories about this. What are some games that you got off of Kickstarter that you were really excited about and just sort of fell flat for you? Or games that maybe you weren't even particularly excited about and still fell flat? Let me know anything and everything in the comments below because you know I'd love to hear from you. That said, we're going to jump right on in with my number five. At number five, I've got Treasure Hunter. On its surface, the game sounds really fun. It's a card drafting game that gives off a lot of RPG type of vibes, where the idea is that you're doing a sort of dungeon delve based off of a hand of cards representing adventurers, and you're trying to go and collect treasure. You're trying to fight off goblins, prevent your fellow compatriots from attacking you, hopefully you don't get bad treasure, all of that kind of stuff. So it gives very much a one deck dungeon type of vibe, uh, dungeon lords type of vibe, a lot of different stuff like that. On top of all of it, it's designed by Richard Garfield, the guy who did Magic the Gathering and King of Tokyo. But for me personally, it just kind of fell flat. It's okay, it's reasonably strategic, but for me, some of the mechanics just kind of felt muddled. Um, I wasn't having as much fun as I thought I would. I, it wasn't as good as I was hoping it would be, especially with Garfield's other designs. But that said, it's a decent game and that's why it's so low on the list. It was the least meh of all of them. So essentially, Treasure Hunter is my number five. And number four, I've got two rooms and a boom, and by extension, the Necroboomicon, which is the particular campaign that I backed. Essentially, in this, you've got the red team and the blue team. Red team has a bomber, and the blue team has a president. Bomber is trying to kill the president. Effectively, the idea is that you, this is very much a social engineering game where everybody's trying to talk to each other, figure out what, they're, what team they're on, what role they have, all of that kind of stuff. And it's interesting because the Necroboomicon, in particular, adds zombies and a few other weird mechanics you've got neutral parties, all sorts of different kind of weirdness. The problem is that in my opinion this suffers from the same thing as uh, Werewolf and particularly One Night where you've got way too many roles and it becomes really really confusing. On top of that, even though it says that you need a minimum of six players, in my opinion you really can't have fun with fewer than ten. So you need a massive group to really get this done because you have to have physically two separate spaces, which is why it's called two rooms and a boom, where everybody's in interacting on either side and then you swap places, you swap people, all of this kind of thing. So it's good, it's a fun game in the right situation, but the problem is that it becomes virtually impossible with a whole bunch of roles and without having a really good solid number of people and a really good mediator, it becomes nearly impossible to play. Two Rooms and a Boom and the Necroboomicon, my number four. And number three, I've got Menu Masters. This is part of a massive Kickstarter that I funded called the Titans of Gaming, where essentially Calliope Games reached out to a whole bunch of different designers and said, hey, can you design games for us? And they're releasing them in waves. And I can go in as they release these waves and say, yeah, I want this one, this one, this one, and this one. I can pick which ones I want to get. That's the tier that I went to. Essentially, Menu Masters I was super excited about because the idea is that you are a gourmet chef and you are trying to make a particular menu of food, where the idea is that you have to go out, you have to get your ingredients, you have to pick your particular menu from face-up versions that you've got available and all this kind of thing. I absolutely love food, I love cooking, I love the fact that we have some fine dining style games. There are not a whole lot of them, but the fact is that there are others that do it better. This one, again, it's on the list because it's okay, but mostly it's higher up on the list because I was really disappointed in it. I was excited to have a game that was really good culinary stuff. The pictures are nice, but beyond that, the mechanics are okay. It's pretty fun, but I was just extra disappointed in this one in particular. Menu Masters, my number three. 
And number two, I've got Shutterbug. This is another game from that same Kickstarter campaign of the Titans of Gaming. Essentially, for this particular one, it was designed by Mike Elliott, the same guy who did Thunderstone, which is why I was so excited about it, because Thunderstone is one of my favorite deck building slash adventure type games of all time. In Shutterbug, the idea is that you're trying to take pictures of these weird mythical creatures. It's like the Chuka Chupacabra and Jackalope and things of that nature. And you've got hex-based tiles that you're going around. You're trying to find clues of getting them. You've got little side quests, assigned jobs, I think is what they're called, and things like that. And again, it's all right. It's just, for this one, I was particularly disappointed because it's Mike Elliott, and I was really hoping for something a little bit meatier. Again, it's okay. It's not inherently bad, but for me personally, I just felt that it was too short. I felt that it didn't have enough strategy with it. Um, I, I found it a little bit too simple, too linear in terms of of what I was doing and it was really blatantly obvious what was best for anybody at any given time. Again, not horrible, not bad, still reasonably fun overall. Shutterbug though, my number two. As implied, it is a science-themed game, which is all you need to know in terms of why I backed it. I absolutely adore science-themed games, and I back pretty much every single one that I can find and afford. In this particular game, the idea is that you have a massive grid of hexagonal tiles, and you are trying to just build out this giant molecule. The thing is, that's why I don't really like it. There are a lot of great science games out there. There are a lot of great chemistry games out there, and the fact is they use the actual science. Science. In this game, you're just making this massive amalgamation monstrosity chemical thing that more than likely doesn't actually exist. Mechanically, it's totally fine. It totally works. It's okay. Um, you've got little attack cards that force your opponents to discard or use specific tiles and things like that. But none of it makes sense scientifically. It's like, yeah, sure, you've got double bonded carbon. You've got double bonded oxygen. You can make these different groups and all this kind of stuff but it's out of context of the science, and so I was sorely, sorely disappointed in this particular game. It's quick, it's relatively easy to learn. Again, it's a decent game for what it is, but I personally was really disappointed, and I was honestly just looking for a lot more from it. Molecular, my number one. Well, everybody, that's gonna be it for me. I hope that you enjoyed this video on my five most meh, Kickstarter games. Like I said, that's kind of an interesting category because again, these games are not inherently bad, any of them. Mechanically, they're relatively solid at least. They're reasonably good. They're reasonably fun. They're just not ones that I'm just like, yes, let's do it. Let's play that particular game. It's ones that I'm like, okay, yeah, it's decent. I'll play it. I'm okay with it, but I would prefer to play something else type of thing. And of course, that said, you guys know I would love to hear your particular stories about this. There's a ton of Kickstarters out there, and I'm sure there's a bunch of them that you guys have backed that you were sort of meh about, so please let me know anything and everything in the comments below because you know I love to hear it all. And that said, as always, if you haven't done so already, please take a look at my various social media pages as well as my Patreon page. On all of those, you'll be able to interact with myself and my channel in a whole bunch of really, really fun ways. But with that, thank you very, very much for being here. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.